Welcome back to Inside the Middle East. We're still in the coastal town of Salala in southern Oban on one of the promenades of the town. The seas are very rough this time of year. In fact, we're told it's dangerous to swim in these waters. However, locals are having fun fishing and playing around. Some of these kids back there are actually wearing football t-shirts. One of them says Beckham, the famous football star. And in our next story, we're going to be speaking of sports. We're going to take you to Saudi Arabia. There, women have very limited rights. Driving, of course, is one of them, one of the most famous ones. But sports is another. Wilf Dinnick introduces us to one Saudi women's basketball team. Four days a week in the port city of Jeddah, practice begins like this. In a country where women cannot even play sports in public, and where finding a place to work out is tough, as is even getting there, women here are banned from driving. But there is one place where they can do what they love. Lina Almaina is the captain. And the images we see in the media, and Western media specifically, is of, you know, head to toe, you know, women covered with uh, no identity, uh, faceless, nameless Saudi women. And I think that um, I'm really glad that we're, we had the chance to, you know, come out and speak in public on TV about the fact that there is a, another segment and a big segment of society that's different, that is just basically normal. The players all pitch in to rent this court hidden from public view. A chance to play without politics. Of course it's sending a message that uh, women should play sports and uh, yeah, we want to become uh, we want to become like everyone else, all the other countries. It all started when Almaina returned from college in the US. She met her husband there where they played pickup ball together. But back in Saudi, she was blocked. She got some women together, a coach, and called her team Jeddah United. She gets calls every day from women wanting to join. But here it's almost impossible to find more courts where women can play. Saudi Arabia is one of the few countries that does not allow women to compete in international sporting events. And girls are even banned from sports in the kingdom's public schools. As if these women didn't have enough obstacles, they can't find a proper place to play here in Saudi Arabia. It's summertime here, terribly hot, and they're forced to practice outdoors. Temperatures often hit 40 degrees Celsius, more than 100 Fahrenheit. In these conditions, and starting so late in life, the players admit they're at a disadvantage. But this is also about setting an example. So eventually they'll start building courts for women, allowing it to school, the talents will come out, and we'll probably have the best one of the team. <laughs> Pat Sadiq is their coach. She moved to Saudi 30 years ago from France to be with her husband. She too dares to dream about the Olympics. It's going to take a long time. Maybe not these girls because of age already, but maybe their daughters will be Olympic. I hope, I hope, I hope some of these do. The game offers something else, a rare opportunity to get out. And for Reem, mother of four, to learn about herself. When I push myself, I can see myself that really I can do it. Yeah, it gave me a lot of confidence playing basketball. So it makes you feel happy, it makes you feel young. It gives you that extra energy, so when you go home, you feel good about yourself. Numerous health studies say Saudi women suffer from obesity and diabetes. Even more reason, these women argue, that their league should be recognized and funded to encourage exercise. Right now, they're limited to playing women's teams at exclusive Saudi private schools. But one highlight was this road trip to the UAE to play a university team. The fact that we lost by only five baskets from a team that does play um, international tournaments in, in Greece and that is really supported and funded by you know the, the, the government there and the school, it was a very positive or memorable experience. There are concerns, though, that being in the spotlight might anger the religious conservatives in Saudi. 
my father, who's worried about us being on TV or p playing, and um, pri even though privately, but there's people who can know, who will know about us, and it might cause problems for us. So I'm sure he's worried, and he's like, "Yeah, he should go ahead, go play." But at the same time, he's worried. But Alma Ina's husband, who pushed his wife to play, insists this is not about religion. I don't, th I don't think we're doing something wrong. You know, our religion is, is actually is, uh, the promotes. Is, promotes sports. We should, we should be fit, we should be healthy. Uh, so I don't think we're doing anything wrong. And through all this, discovering something much more. 22-year-old Noura went through a bout with cancer and had a finger amputated. The whole basketball team came and visited me in the hospital and just said, hey, no, don't worry about it, two months time, you'll be back on the court. You know that encouragement that you get from, they're not just friends, they're, 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 they're really, truly our family. <laughs> Seven women who count their team as having many victories far beyond the court. For Inside the Middle East, I'm CNN's Wilf Dinnick, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we'll introduce you to Yemen's rapidly diminishing Jewish community. Stay with us.